Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how I built this awesome light for my new workbench that unfolds just like this and has light over the entire table. Let's go see how I got it done. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. In the last video, I showed you how I put together this workbench from a bunch of free scrap wood I found in the street. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure you go check it out. It was a decent video. What I want to do in this video is go ahead and make this workbench a little more practical. I want something that I can pull down from overhead, cleanly illuminate the entire table, and make it really workable. And I figured while I'm at it, let's add a phone mount up top, that way I can give you guys some good overhead shots for any future videos. We had an old fridge break down, and before we threw it away, I managed to salvage the LED lights. I think they might do just the job for this project. I looked up the model numbers on Amazon, and they're worth about 60 bucks a pop. So this is 120 bucks of free lights if they work. Now that I had the lights identified, it was time to start prototyping. I like doing this with cardboard since it's really cheap and lets me try out a bunch of ideas with no real cost. I ended up on this idea that's somewhat similar to a butterfly knife, but not really. It's pretty elegant, I think it'll work well. And as I mentioned, I want a way to mount my phone for those overhead shots. And of course, don't forget to recycle your bad ideas. But with that done, it was time to go into Fusion 360 and work up a first draft of my design. All right, so I finished the first draft in Fusion 360 and it's a little bit of a complex beast. So I'm gonna do a test print um, just of the one mechanism I wanna test. And if that goes well, we'll move on to the full print. Once I got this printed, I cleaned them up and tried to do a test assembly with the wire, but it just would not go through. This was 100% my fault. It ended up being way too hard to get the wire through some of the curves I modeled, so I learned from that in my next design. Despite these flaws, I went ahead and assembled the rest of the prototype, and overall I liked the form, so I stuck with it for the next design. All right, time to take a break from doing the modeling because my power adapter's arrived, so it's time to see if these LEDs actually work. The LEDs work at 12 volt power. They're not actually burning like they were when I tried it with 24 volt, 24 volt. Uh, so now we just have to go ahead and hook up two of these together and we're well on our way to having a working light. All right, so I'm printing prototype number two. I have a little more confidence on this mechanism, so we'll see how it goes, but we'll check back in once this print is done. Time to go ahead and open it up and take it to our workbench. So once again, I popped these off the build plate, cleaned them up and tried feeding that wire through. This time worked out a lot better. I learned my lesson from last time and did the same with the other piece, and then they mate together just like this, where the top piece kind of feeds into the bottom and it gets pulled through the base arm. And hey, look at that. It works with enough slack to pull the cable through the full range of motion. All right, so I have the next design finished. I think this is gonna be the one, assuming no printer issues. So shoot off to the printer and hopefully this is gonna be okay. Now the first four prints in seven hours went pretty well, but then we ran into a slight hiccup, as you can see here. There was a little piece of filament that got jammed right here, just in the extruder, and that stopped our printing progress. Such a small piece, but it required me to take apart the whole hot end and put it all back together, as you see here. And luckily, this happened with the last print of the night around 1 a.m., so it didn't impact things too much. And just as a note, my printer doesn't actually have the build volume to support these long parts, so I had to print them in two pieces and connect them just like this with a dab of super glue. I've made all the parts available on my printables.com page linked in the description below. And once those were assembled, I went ahead and dropped in the magnets that will make sure these two pieces stay aligned once they snap closed, just like this. All right, so we have all the pieces printed now. We have the two LED bars with the magnet that actually connects pretty well, almost like a little slate there. We have the base plate to mount everything to the workbench, all the accessory pins and other pieces like that. And we have the first piece of the actual base arm that will rotate out uh, printed. So all that's left is to print the companion for this guy and interesting. Hello? Oh, it's printing now. Okay, cool. Well, let's go see how that worked out and then we'll make the final assembly. All right, and there's the final piece of the print. Pop this off the tray and time to put it all together. So first things first, I went ahead and cleaned up all the prints, got rid of any burrs. You can see me drilling out the pinholes here. And once that was done, I got some sandpaper just to even out any printing issues that I'd noticed as I was assembling these. And with that done, I used some super glue to attach all of the pieces that I had to print in two parts due to my printer's small size. With those done, I moved on to the electronics. First, I measured out the wires and started threading them through the holes in the top arm here. Then I did the same thing after quickly twisting them off to make sure they wouldn't fall through with the bottom arm, which you can see has more holes to allow for full travel. And all of these get placed into the base before being secured with a pin, just like this. 
And with that done, I connected up the two sets of positive and negative wires for both LEDs and added a button, nice and satisfying. And after that, I did a quick sanity check just to make sure there was enough slack in these cables to allow for full travel of the arm to the 90 degree position on both arms. Then I threaded through the long runs of cable here for both positive and negative, both of which would feed into the base. I soldered those together to the button, added some heat shrink tubing, and finally cut it off. Time for the first test. Let's see how this goes. In theory, if I hit this switch, it should work. Hey, look at that. All right, so all the lights appear to work and the switch works. Everything is encapsulated within the container. So I think this is looking good. Now I just have to clean it up, get it mounted to the table, and I think we're in business. And all this meant was adding some hot glue to get those LEDs secured in place, making sure to support the connections. And I also installed this TPU grip plate, which stops my phone from sliding around when I use it as an overhead mount. I used some super glue on this high surface area bottom and went ahead and stuck it down. With that done, all I had to do was add a final set of pin supports to the base that will connect it to the workbench and go ahead and roughly center this on the bench using a tape measure. Once I had everything lined up, I went ahead and marked, then drilled my four holes, making sure to hand tighten so I didn't break the print. And there we go. And we'll connect these cables. We would swing it around like this, open up our lights, and... Hmm. All right, we're missing this side, but this side is all up. Interesting. There we go. Yeah, so that quick connector basically popped out there. I was questioning whether to use those or not may have been the wrong choice, but that doesn't look too bad. The last step is to go ahead and add some diffusion to these lights. As is, they're really bright, almost painful to look at, and they put a lot of harsh shadows down on the table. I want to go ahead and cut some acrylic that I found out I was able to give kind of a frosted glass effect to just by really finely sanding it so it kind of diffuses the light out just like you see there. I have some spare acrylic sheets from my Ring Rewards project. Check it out in the video linked here if you haven't seen it yet. It's pretty good. Now, what I want to do with this is go ahead and measure it out so it'll fit these slots that I already printed, and we should be able to fit two of them pretty easily just in this spare sheet here. So then I went ahead and cut those out, sanded them, starting with 80 grit, worked my way up to about 150, and then I went ahead and cleaned up, and voila, diffused light. And here we have it, the final build. Honestly, this thing looks pretty good. It's surprisingly addictive to open and close. You just swing it open like this, pop the two arms over, and with a simple click of a button, you have nice even light over your entire workbench. Plus, you get an overhead camera that looks just like this. And if you were wondering, the overhead camera is actually surprisingly solid. It doesn't take much weight at all to move, and you can see the TPU is really grippy, especially on this phone case, which makes sure it doesn't rock away or let your phone drop. All right, and that is the finished build. Honestly, I'm super happy with how this turned out. It's really clean, fun to open. I've honestly just been here opening, closing, spinning them around for the last like five, 10 minutes. It's a little bit addicting, but it's a fun project. It's gonna serve its purpose well for giving me good workbench lighting and a nice place to store my phone for those overhead shots. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Uh, if you have, please consider liking and subscribing because it really helps grow the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Stay safe. Thank you.